Hello. We are about to read chapter five of Becoming Naomi Leon by Pam Munoz Ryan. We are going to take a deep breath in and exhale. And let's begin. Chapter five, A Charm of Hummingbird. In the morning, I tiptoed into the living room kitchen. Skyla rested peaceful on the fold-out, her hair making a splash of almost purple on the pillow. Without makeup, she looked younger than last night. Lying on one side with her legs pulled up a bit, the curve of her body made an empty space, like a little nest in the middle of the bed. I wish she was awake and we didn't have to go to school. I had visions of Owen, my mom, and me all huddled up together, giggling and telling stories. I stared at Skyla for so long that I didn't notice Owen standing at my side until he nudged me and handed over a box of cereal. Through the small, slatted window, I saw Graham watering the bird of paradise plants that grew on the side of the trailer. We fixed our bowls as quiet as we could and went outside to sit on the patio couch under the trailer awning. Graham came around and sat opposite us in the two-person swing. Was she stirring? Graham nodded toward baby Beluga. She's sleeping, said Owen. Graham cleared her throat like she was going to make an announcement. <clears throat> When Skyla came in last night, we had a heart to heart. She has assured me that she just wants to spend a little time with you. I am going to give her the benefit of the doubt and see how she behaves. I think that's the right thing to do. Besides, you both must be natural curious about your mother. I set down my cereal bowl and walked over to Graham and hugged her hard and didn't let go. Don't you worry, Naomi, said Graham, patting my back. We're going to weather this. Let's just plant plenty of sunshine in our brains. I squeezed my eyes shut. I planted the image of me showing Skyla my carvings one by one and her fussing over my talent while I shined, proud as punch. Mrs. Maloney tapped on her bedroom window, breaking my concentration. She waved at us, then pointed at Owen. I almost forgot, said Graham, looking at Owen. Mrs. Maloney needs help moving her hummingbird feeder. She loves watching them through the window with all their flitting and shimmering, but they've taken to diving and pecking at Tomcat. I told her you'd be over after school. Owen nodded to Mrs. Maloney and waved back to her. Will Skyla be here for dinner? I asked. I don't know her plans, Naomi, said Graham, but I will make a point of inviting her. That evening, we were almost finished eating. Thursday pork chops, when we heard Skyla's car pull onto the gravel. A minute later, she burst into the living room kitchen with her hands full of shopping bags. Graham, Owen, and I froze with our forks in midair, just like one of those commercials on television. Hi, everybody. I've been shopping. Naomi, get over here and see what I bought you. Skyla dropped the bags and began pulling clothes from them. Oh, this one's for me. But here, this one's for you. And what do you think of this cute top? And these jeans are perfect. I hope they fit. She held up, she held them out to me. I had been wearing Graham's homemade clothes and the ones from the second time around shop for so long that I couldn't believe someone was handing me a brand new pair of store bought jeans. Skylar looked at me. Well, are you gonna just sit there? Come back to the bedroom with me and try them on. Graham's eyebrows peaked with surprise. I hurried to the bedroom and tried on the jeans. They are perfect, said Skyla. 
Now try on this top. Top. If it fits, I'm going to buy you a few more. The light pink stretchy top had little rhinestones and a butterfly pattern on the front. I had seen one in the window of Walker Gordon, but I never dreamed I'd have one of my own. I walked out to show Graham and Owen. Skyla followed me. Graham had her back to us standing at the sink. Skyla cleared her throat and said, eh -em, here she is, star of screen and television. Graham turned around and smiled and clapped her wet hands together. Why, don't you look spiffy? And Owen, Graham said, as if signaling Skyla not to forget him. Oh, today was shopping for the girls only day. Next time I'll shop for Owen. Owen grinned at Skyla and said a little too loud in his raspy voice, Thank you. Is there something you've been wanting? Asked Skyla. Owen ran to his room and came back with a magazine picture of the bicycle and held it up to Skyla. Naomi and me love to go to dance bike shop and look at new bikes, he said. Owen, said Graham, I'm not sure that's in the price range Skyla had in mind. Skyla nodded at Owen. Well, that's something to think about. Now, Naomi, why don't you let me do something with your hair? It's a troublesome mess, said Graham. I'd love to see it out of her face. Skyla laughed. <laughs> I have French braided the wildest heads you've ever seen. Sit down and let me get started. Are you tender-headed? No, I said, pulling half the dozen clips and situating myself cross-legged in front of her. As Skyla brushed out my tangles, I couldn't help thinking over and over that my mother's hands were on my head. She took a fine tooth comb and pulled it through my hair until there wasn't the tiniest knot anywhere. Then she started at the center top, bringing up tiny strands of hair, one over the other. Her fingers were nimble and gentle. It felt as though she was playing the piano on my head. The little finger kept reaching lower and lower, carving out sections to braid into the wraps. In a matter of minutes, she said, All done, and don't you look pretty. Here, take this hand mirror so you can see the back. I jumped up and ran into the bathroom. There wasn't one strand of hair out of place and the braid was woven like the rolled edge of a basket. I patted and admired it for 15 minutes straight. Skyla came in and stood behind me and looked in the mirror. Naomi, you have a perfect heart-shaped face. Did you ever notice that? I had not ever noticed that, but now that my hair was pulled back tight, I, I could see she was right. Now, Stay with me while I freshen my makeup. Clive and I are going out and I want to look perfect. I watched her put on the base and the blush and liner and eyeshadow, which took over half an hour. She gave me some clear lip gloss called Wet as a Whistle. I put it on then took it back to my room and put it in my backpack. I couldn't wait to put it on at school in front of the other girls. Back in Graham's bedroom, I watched Skyla squeeze into her jeans and boots, then gather her purse and jacket. How do I look? She said, smiling. Nice, I nodded, the braid tickling the back of my neck. Then I followed her into the living room kitchen. Where's Owen? She said, I have something to tell both of you. He's, tr he's trying to coax Mrs. Maloney's cat out from under her trailer said Graham. Poor old Tom is scared to poke his head out for fear of hummingbird attack. Well, that's neighborly sweet. Now me, I'll tell you and you can pass it along. I saw on the fridge that your teacher conferences are a week from today, next Thursday, right? Well, I am planning on being there with Graham to see your school and meet your teachers. Isn't that great? I'm looking forward to it. I've got to run on to Clive's right now, but I'll see you later. Bye. After she shut the door, I could still smell her gardenia perfume. I sat down next to Graham. 
She patted my knee and looked me up and down once more, smiling and shaking her head like she was trying to figure out a puzzle. She said, it's real nice that Skyla wants to go to your conferences. What do you think about me staying home just this once so she can have some special time with you kids? Okay, I said. I could show her my clay sculpture in the art room. Graham kissed me on the forehead. Your hair looks pretty as a picture. Are you going to wear your new do to school tomorrow? I quickly nodded and wondered if anyone would notice the difference. And that is the end of chapter five.